everybody. Welcome to Best and Worst of an Actor that, that we are fond of. This is the show we do every week, which gives you a little taste of what we offer in the Hidden Gems podcast. And so if you like this smaller video, make sure to check out the longer Hidden Gems episode. And so this week we decided to do the best and worst of Hugh Jackman. And uh, he's one of our favorite actors. And uh, he's he's a very versatile actor. He can sing, he can dance, he can wear those claws. And as Wolverine, he's great. And so it's gonna be a lot of fun to talk about. And I'm film critic Rachel Wagner and Ryan is here. Hey Rachel, so great to be back with you again. And yeah, Hugh Jackman is what is referred to in the theater world as a triple threat. He can sing, he can dance, and he can act. And yeah. he does all three incredibly well. Uh, he does have some misses, but hey, no actor has ever bad a thousand. So thankfully he has more good movies than bad. Yeah, definitely. Well, all right. Well, what is your best of Hugh Jackman? So this was very tough because there's a lot of movies I could have chosen. I could have chosen to Les Mis, which he nearly won an Oscar for and should have reason number 15,325,000 why I don't trust the Oscars. But I decided to go with Logan, which was the final turn of his as Wolverine. And yeah, this movie is awesome. Hugh Jackman, Patrick Stewart finally got the send off that they so richly deserved after spending nearly two decades as Logan and Professor X. Uh, the movie was directed by James Mangold who directed Walk the Line, Copland, and after this movie would direct Ford v Ferrari. He's one of the best directors working today that sadly I don't think gets talked about enough. And I think he definitely should. And when the Wolverine came out in 2013, everyone was like, okay, this is good, but I think there could be more. Logan is more. This movie is a hard R. It is told in about as raw in a manner as you can get with a movie like this. But at, when you bore right down to it, it actually has a really beating heart to it. This is a meditation on Logan and how he has lived a very long and troubled life, and he is very much nearing the end of it. And he has to take care of Professor X, who is nearly out of it at this point. And I could, I could talk about this movie for days, but it's simultaneously sad and also can be funny at times. It's got great action, but it also has very slow and tender moments. Uh, Hugh Jackman's chemistry with Daphne Keene is incredible. Like I said, I could go on, but like I said in my review for Shane, Logan is the Shane of superhero movies. And I'll just leave off at that. Yeah. Yeah. So I haven't seen Logan, believe it or not. I know. <laughs> it's a big blind spot of mine. Uh, but uh, my best, I, I really debated. I went back and forth, back and forth. If I was just going off of pure acting, I would probably say bad education. But if I'm talking about my favorite, then I'm going to say Les Mis. And I know the Les Miserables has issues and problems. I get that. They went for the live music and a lot of people, you know, didn't love that choice, but I appreciated it. I, I, I've i seen Les Miserables done by high school students and I loved it. I've seen Les Miserables done by super amateurs and I loved it. I I just love Les Miserables. I love the message of this, of this show the idea that uh, of redemption and uh, and mercy versus justice and uh, and I love that there's no real villains uh, except for maybe the the Nadiers, but they're silly and funny so I can deal with it and uh, I think that he does a good job as Valjean I think that he uh, you feel for him he's very sympathetic and the whole cast I think is pretty good of course, Anne Hathaway won the Oscar for her role, uh, and I I don't know I just this this was the first one of the first pieces of music that I ever really fell in love with was Les Misérables, and I knew literally every single line of the whole show. And then when I went and saw it when I was fifteen uh, and as a high school student, it just blew my mind, and I absolutely loved it. And then I've seen it three times on Broadway since and loved it every time. 
And I've, like I said, I've seen pretty much every production whenever it comes, whether it's at the local professional theater or at a, if a high school's doing it, whoever's doing it, I'll go see it because I love it so much. And so even with its flaws, I love Les Miserables, the movie. And, uh, and you know, I love musicals and I, uh, I just love the message of this musical in particular. And I love the songs. They're so beautiful. Yeah, my previous knowledge of Les Mis up until that point was Bring Him Home and maybe a touch here and there of Freedom is Mine, the, those two songs. Uh -huh. So when I saw this movie, I pretty much went in blind and I was just blown away by how, by, by just the quality of it. Again, it's not perfect. Russell Crowe, God bless him, he cannot sing his way out of a paper yeah. bag. But, but I don't think that's necessary. I, I don't think for the rest of the the singing that's not necessarily a bad thing i mean people are like if only they had professional singers do it i'm like okay maybe but then you wouldn't have them communicate the acting part of it you're either going to have actors try and sing or singers try and act i, I wish that's... they had dubbed him i do i think that uh that would have been the better choice and but they went the live music choice i just his songs are are meant it, like it's fine if you decide not to dub if the songs are written that way but the problem with lame is rob is the songs are written for professional singers so they sound weird when they're not sung by a professional singer uh but it's, it's the same way with beauty and the beast uh, the songs that were actually written for for the non-singers the new songs they were sounded way better than the old songs written for professional singers and so that that's what's the problem like the thing about la la land is yeah they're not the best singers but at least the songs were written for them and so it, it showcased their range and their skill as best as possible and so that's why i think singing when you have someone like russell crowe singing stars which is such a such a a powerful anthem you need someone who can sing a powerful anthem so why not dub his voice nobody would care they did it for my fair lady they did it for king and i they did it for <laughs> you know some of the great musicals ever made they did it for west side story why can't they do it for for Belém is rob yeah my fair lady and west side story are both awesome yeah I agree. Anyway, that's my choice. I love Les Miserables and I love Hugh Jackman. And uh, so that's my choice for my favorite. Uh, so what is your worst of Hugh Jackman? So my worst, and again, Hugh Jackman really doesn't have that many out and out like God awful movies, but there is one and it is called Pan. It was released in 2015. Nobody saw it, thank God, because the movie <laughs> was truly terrible. I should have known that this movie was going to be bad from the second that as soon as Peter enters Neverland, the pirates start singing Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. And as cool as the thought of Hugh Jackman singing Nirvana is, in the context of him looking like Blackbeard after he just went to Hot Topic for the first time, is not cool. This movie is just a baffling series of choices. It was like, why was this choice made? Why was that choice made? Why is Garrett Hedlund talking out of the corner of his hat like this all the time? And it, it's just an origin story for a series or a trilogy that is never going to exist. And I think that's the cringy part of it. Hugh Jackman is trying, God bless his soul, but even he couldn't save it. I think, I think he was trying to do his best Jack Sparrow impression and completely whiffed it. I could talk about this movie for hours, but I'll just leave it off at that. It is not good. I still haven't seen that one either. Thank goodness. I got warned sufficiently and I didn't have to cover it for anything. So I didn't see it. Uh, so my worst, I definitely would pick movie 43, but that's a bunch of shorts. So I'll give them a pass on that. Because <laughs> um, that's one of the worst movies ever made. But uh, I will go with X-Men Origins Wolverine and this movie it's just so boring and so not interesting and the claws look so bad and uh, there's just nothing I mean it, it looks like a episode of television it doesn't look like a feature film uh, it's it's got very little to recommend it you've got uh, you've got Deadpool's mouth stitched up which makes no sense you have uh the, all these characters brought in 
uh, Gambit brought in uh, and it, it just does nothing and just kind of hangs there and it's boring and it's just really bad. <laughs> it's one of the Dang worst comic movies I've ever Fox, seen. You had one job, just one. <laughs> Make Wolverine look cool. It's literally almost done for you and they yeah. somehow managed to screw it up. Yeah, and it looks terrible. This movie, talk about baffling choices. Like, Casting Will I Am from the Black Eyed Peas as a mutant. Why was that done? Like, why was Blob made into just a fat guy and not like <laughs> some kind of a mutation? Yeah. Like, why? Like, why did they make Lee of Schreiber a block of wood? Why is Gambit in the movie for like three scenes? Why does Deadpool have no mouth? I could go on, but I'm sure everyone is sick of me saying why isn't this a thing? But wow this, yeah it's really bad even uh, even when i saw it in 2009 and i was in the target demographic i knew it was bad yeah so there we go that is our best and worst of hugh jackman let us know what your picks would be in the comment section and please share this video we'd really appreciate it and ryan how can people find you they can find me on facebook twitter instagram and letterboxd at ryan cam 20 they're they're and then there's also my YouTube channel, which is just called Ryan Cam. Uh, today, we're recording this on a Monday, which means yesterday I uploaded my AFI project video on West Side Story. On Tuesday, my video for Taxi Driver will be dropping. And then Thursday, I'll be dropping my video for MASH. So a lot of content to look forward to there. Also, I'll be covering the final episode of The Mandalorian Season 2, so that's going to be a lot of fun. If you all haven't checked me out, please do. I put a lot of time and effort into the channel, and I'm very proud of it. Yeah, y'all should definitely subscribe. It's really fun. And make sure to check out our longer episode of Hidden Gems Podcast. We have a whole holiday theme this, uh, this episode, which is why I'm wearing my Santa hat. <laughs> and so check that out you can follow me at rachel's reviews all of our social media itunes youtube and on ron tomatoes so check that out and also check out the hallmark podcast we've got lots of interviews and episodes and recaps and of all your holiday films this year and more and so make sure to take a look at that we also got our patron group and our merch stores so take a look at that we really appreciate it and uh, thanks so much and we'll talk to you all later bye everyone bye